Alright guys, welcome back to F1 News. If the Red Bull stays as fast as it presently is, we may be relying on teammate rivalries to keep this season interesting between Verstappen and Perez for the title, but also between arguably the strongest pairing on the grid, Hamilton and Russell in the Mercedes. Lewis Hamilton made some quite interesting comments after the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix, suggesting it was Russell's setup that gave him the advantage that weekend. Russell says, well look, I just chose the better setup, and there was no luck involved on my side of the garage. Very much enjoyed your thoughts in the comments. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. First of all, a big update here from the FIA saying that the long-standing tradition, which is in fairness been a long-standing rule, of it coming up over the pit wall, kind of, well, this fencing, right, where teams will go to celebrate, this is now no longer allowed, the debris fence. It's been forbidden, I believe, to do this technically for probably about 15 years or so, but it's never been enforced. The FIA never cared about the teams having a good time and celebrating their result. Their great result, of course, all the teams do this for, well, just various reasons, like largely for the team that wins or the driver that wins, but sometimes if there's a great result throughout the grid or, you know, a podium or something, the teams will go pretty wild for it. Now, I believe it still might be allowed to go through the larger holes in the fencing here, but climbing on and going over the top of it is now going to be more strictly kind of, well, confined by the FIA in terms of what you can do. So classic stuff where they see something that's rather fun and enjoyable and that decide to strip it away. Now, okay, there might be some danger involved here, but uh, maybe that's uh, the driver's or the, uh, the engineer's own discretion as to, um, as to what they decide to do. You know, it's their call maybe at the end of the day, but still, the FIA is clamping down and uh, you're no longer allowed to do this. If you do, there's probably going to be a fine in place. I don't imagine they're going to take away the team's Grand Prix win or anything, but um, there will be some fine in place now if teams are seen doing this, which has been a tradition in Formula 1 for donkey's years at this point. So kind of sad to see uh, the way things are going, but still a big update of the day nonetheless. Quick talk on Ferrari. There's going to be no big upgrade here in Melbourne. It's going to start in Baku, their upgrade package. Leclerc has given some positive signs and says we have some upgrades in the factory that will be introduced over the coming months, which should help us close the gap to our rivals. There's no precise date of when they're working so hard in Maranello that this date is brought forward every week, which is quite interesting in a way, right? Because after Melbourne here this weekend, we have basically a month until Baku. China was meant to be the fourth Grand Prix, but it's not. So Baku's the fourth Grand Prix in a long time from now, three, four weeks away. So maybe what Leclerc Claire was saying is that these upgrades were meant to come, okay, at least some of them were meant to come in Imola, right, and they probably still will, but um, some teams will be working very hard to bring that date slightly earlier, and maybe they're going to bring some more things in Baku than was originally suggested. Will there be enough, though? Because let's be honest, Ferrari's upgrades last year didn't really do all that much, all things considered. Michael Massey as well was back in the paddock this weekend, and Hamilton wasn't necessarily so happy about it. We'll see his comment on it in a second. I believe there's some supercar stuff going on this weekend, which is why Massey is here. He's also Australian. So, you know, the first time he's been in the paddock since Abu Dhabi 2021, interestingly enough. And even Hamilton says, I'm focused on my future. I'm focused on getting back to winning. There is uh, nothing to say. He, you know, he wishes to speak no words to Michael Massey. But speaking of Hamilton's comments in the media day today, some quite interesting developments of the kind of intra-team rivalry at Mercedes. And this was expected eventually anyway. Hamilton was beaten in the championship by Russell last season. You look at the race pace, you look at the qualifying records that, you know, the numbers don't tell the entire story because Hamilton was 13 to 9 in qualifying last year and certainly towards the end of the year was generally superior in race pace but Russell got the better of them in the point standings and Hamilton will want to make sure that doesn't happen again. Now last weekend Hamilton was asked the question about George Russell's podium and says you know that's got nothing to do with me but it's good for the team. Sure now of course this podium was revoked shortly after this. Alonso got it back but um, Hamilton at the time was I mean look every F1 driver and every F1 champion is a bad loser to some degree. If you lose to your teammate, if you are outclassed by your teammate over the weekend, you're not going to be happy, especially a guy like Lewis Hamilton for sometimes his, you know, happy-go-lucky, outgoing demeanor. He's still clearly a fierce competitor at heart, and he wouldn't have won seven world championships in 103 races if he wasn't a fierce competitor. So he doesn't like losing to his teammate. There's no doubt about it. And uh, we could see, I think, some of that frustration boil over last weekend. He actually also said after the Grand Prix, strategy didn't really work out for me. Setup, though, was a bit off. Off. I think if I had the setup that George had, I would have been in a better position. Lots to work on, but there are positives to take away. On the setup, there was a 50-50 choice. I chose one way, he chose another. More often than not, the way he went was the wrong one, but it just happened to work. So I could only match his pace rather than be quicker this weekend. So basically he says, if I'd have had his setup, I'd have been faster than him, so I'm the faster driver. And also saying that um, it just happened to work, as in, it kind of implies that George got lucky, right? I mean, if you read that statement, 
It basically says, you know, more often than not, I'm correct. This time he was correct. Okay, maybe lucky isn't quite the right word to use, but um, maybe fortunate in some regard that the majority of time in Hamilton's opinion, he's correct. This time Russell was, and that helped him that weekend. So George Russell, understandably, was asked for his reaction to these comments, and um, he gave his thoughts as follows. Now, we know that Russell and Hamilton, last year at Brazil might have been the peak, right? They got the one too. Hamilton seemed very happy for Russell to get that first Grand Prix victory. But over time, Hamilton, if Russell keeps performing as he is, is not going to be so happy, especially because Russell seems more comfortable with this W14 than Hamilton is so far. So Russell went on to say this, I don't think there's any luck in it at all. I think it's down to the preparation you put in before the events. Going on to say, the changes we made overnight, I knew that was going to be the right direction with the work we did with the team. And I believed it was going to be better than the setup that Lewis opted for. I think everyone's got different preferences. I was happy with the direction I took and the work that I'm doing with the engineers. So um, it's interesting, right? Hamilton makes the comments of, yeah, most of the time I'm right. This time George was kind of uh, maybe implying that he was a little bit fortunate that this time it was correct. And Russell's like, look, no, I did the work. I put the work in. I chose the right setup. Hamilton chose the wrong one. And, um, you know, that's what caused the difference. He obviously isn't going to say, all right, oh, I'm faster than Lewis and all this. But um, it's definitely playing down the idea that it was only setup related why Russell got the better of Hamilton last weekend. And it does feel to me that there's something of a kind of glass half full, glass half empty thing going on here where Hamilton, after all the years of Mercedes dominance and the great cars, is feeling somewhat pessimistic about this year. And you can understand why. Whereas Russell, after the years in the Williams, is probably seeing it with a more glass half full approach than Hamilton is. And I think that shift in mindset is, um, is probably helping Russell a fair bit this season compared to where Hamilton is. Seems to be more frustrated than Russell in general. Now, Hamilton responds to this again, a kind of clarifies a little bit further and saying, look, Russell did a great job. I never said that he didn't, but it's one specific thing in the suspension, which you have to do on a Friday night after practice. That you can't change again for the rest of the weekends. You're basically rolling the dice, which um, does imply that given that Russell got it right, there was maybe an element of luck involved. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. I've done it in the past. Sometimes it hasn't worked. Sometimes it has. It works great for George. He did a great job. And that's what the setup gives you. So very interesting stuff. We know, of course, that uh, Verstappen and Perez, they've uh, come to blows last season. And obviously so far this season, things got pretty interesting in Jeddah. I don't expect there to be that much of a rivalry in reality between the two. Over the next four or five race, I think Verstappen is going to put a significant points differential between himself and Perez. But nonetheless, those are the two championship challenges. Unless Aston Martin can somehow put something magical together with Alonso. And Perez has been clear they want to beat each other. Perez and Verstappen even have alternate opinions on what exactly went down in Jeddah in terms of the communication. And it's all getting quite interesting there. But I think at Mercedes, it's also very, very interesting to see because frankly, we know that Toto Wolff said the other day that he would happily push Hamilton around the track to try and get his eighth world title if he could, implying that the intention for Mercedes is to give Hamilton a good enough car to get his eighth world championship. But George Russell, by the time they get a competitive car to potentially win a championship, which is going to be no sooner than next season, Russell will be within his third year at Mercedes, if not further on than that, when they have a competitive car again, if they do. And Russell isn't just going to sit there and be happy with Hamilton winning his championship rights. If it had been year one and the W13 was a championship contender, Russell might have been semi-content to see Hamilton go and win the title. Nowadays, that's not going to happen. You don't know when you're going to get another chance. And if magically tomorrow or next season, they turn up with a competitive car, Russell isn't just going to let Hamilton breeze to the championship. He's going to be very competitive with him. And Russell is probably just going to get better and better with more experience in the Mercedes and in Formula One. Whereas Hamilton is, you know, I still think Hamilton is a very competitive driver, but he's almost certainly past his prime. Alonso is a bit of a specimen, right? This guy's an anomaly. I think Hamilton is an anomaly of sorts as well, but I don't think Hamilton's getting any faster. So um, this is the thing, right? Okay, Hamilton had more pace than Russell last year, but over time, things are going to inevitably get competitive between the two of them. I thought that was only really going to happen if and when they got a highly competitive car, but it seems already things are starting to emerge. You just look at the comments. People say there's no friction here. Like, just listen to the words that are said about the two drivers between each other. And you can tell there's a little bit more friction there internally than there was previously. And I think you can understand why. The other piece of the puzzle here that might be frustrating Hamilton is the position of the W14 seat. If you guys look at kind of the overhead images of the car, you can see that it's slightly further forward than some of the others. And certainly when compared to last year, so Hamilton says it feels like you're sitting on the front wheels. Our cockpit is too close to the front. That means that you don't have good as good of a control and a feeling about what's happening at the rear end of the car. It changes the attitude of the car, how you perceive its movement, and it makes it harder to predict compared to 
when you're sitting further back. So that might be part of why Hamilton doesn't seem to have the confidence in the car, especially in qualifying, to push it to its absolute limit, not knowing if the rear is going to step away from him. Not an easy thing to fix. He says it has to change for the future and it will 100%, but it's going to not be an easy thing for them to do this. They might be able to find a way to resolve the issue in part, but fundamentally this is baked into the car design. And we can see that last year's cockpit on the upper side, on the W13, was significantly further back than this year's, you can tell by the halo, right, than this year's cockpit is. So I don't know why Mercedes made this call, but um, it's clear that it's moved forward by a fair you know, chunk of space, right, based on what you can see here, which is a similarly a big problem for Hamilton. He has a really hard time figuring out how the car's going to behave. So they're trying to fix it, but it's not something that's going to be easy to accomplish and may well mean that this kind of tension between Hamilton and Russell gets even bigger in, in coming races if Russell is able to take better advantage of something that Hamilton is uh, not particularly happy with to potentially put more points on the board. In fairness though, Hamilton's still ahead of Russell right now, 20 points to 18 as it stands, but um, yeah, obviously a long season still to go. So very much intrigued to your thoughts in the comments below. Just one final thing to mention before the weekend here on Red Bull, because um, it still seems like, and this might be the only hope for an interesting weekend to be honest, is reliability concerns in the Red Bull camp remaining. They're still unclear where their problems are from. They believe they might be related just to the straight up procurement of the drive shaft parts and in the quality control because um, they still are concerned about the drive shaft and the gearbox and other elements that haven't been performing so well. Last year they had a rapid car even at the start of the season but um, you know they had reliability issues that affected them in Bahrain and Melbourne last year. Red Bull has not been a good track for Red Bull at all. I don't believe they've won here since about 2011 so um, you know long time for Red Bull to try and overhaul that. If their car works flawlessly a 1-2 should be expected definitely but um, they're still concerned Red Bull that their cars might not make it to the end of the race. Now the issue is they're so fast that they can you know just nurse their car to the end which is what they've done the last two Grand Prix and still finished miles ahead of the pack but very much enjoy to your thoughts in the comments. Hit the like button if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new, take care and I'll see you next time.